In this lecture, I'm going to explain the next exercise that we are going to do. This is the beginner's exercise prompt, meaning that if you are not a beginner, you can do the full exercise, which is coming next. The main difference is that for beginners, you're going to do a fill in the blanks exercise. For non-beginners, you're going to do the full exercise, which involves designing the entire program from scratch. So if you are not a beginner, then you can skip this lecture and move on to the full exercise. If you are a beginner, then listen carefully. As we progress throughout the course, there's going to be less and less hand-holding. So early on, while there may be simple exercises, it's not going to be like that the whole way through. As you progress, you're going to improve your skills. And as such, you're going to be expected to do more and more of the heavy lifting on your own. So the layout of the coming program is like this. There are three main sections. First, we're going to define the bandit class, which kind of acts as your slot machine, if you want to go with that analogy. It's going to have a pull method, which is equivalent to pulling the arm of the slot machine and obtaining a reward. But unlike a real slot machine, it's also going to store an estimate of the win rate for that bandit. Remember that you, as the algorithm designer, don't know the true win rate. In this situation, technically we do because it's a simulation, but we have to act as if this information isn't known to us. The second major component of the program is the loop where we perform the epsilon greedy algorithm. The third component is to print the results and plot a graph of the win rate over time. This code is code I've written for you, so your job is mostly to complete the implementation of epsilon greedy. So let's look at the code. So the file you're going to work with is called epsilon greedy starter.py. At the top, we have our bandit class. In the initializer, we take in a value p, which represents the true win rate for this bandit. We're going to pretend that we don't know this value. Next, we have instance variables to represent our estimate of p, as well as n, the number of samples. Notice that these have been left as to do's, so it's your job to initialize them correctly. Next, we have the pull function, which has been completed for you. It returns a 1 with probability p. Next, we have the update function, which takes in a sample value x and uses it to update the p estimate. So again, there are a couple of to-dos here that it's your job to fill in. Next, we have our experiment function, which is going to run our epsilon greedy algorithm. Inside this function, we're going to initialize a list of bandit objects with win rates equal to the bandit probabilities constant. Next, we're going to initialize a few variables that will keep track of the data we collect during the experiment. You don't have to worry about what these are unless you want to try and figure them out on your own. They are not necessary to understand in order to complete your task. Next, we enter a loop that runs num trials times. Inside the loop, we use the epsilon greedy strategy to select a bandit index j. j will be an integer from 0 up to the number of bandits minus 1. And of course, it will be used to index the list of bandits, as you can see in the later lines of code. As you can see, there are more to-dos here, and it's your job to fill in these blanks. After we've selected a bandit j, we call the pull function to obtain a reward x. We update our rewards log with the value x, and then update our bandit's mean estimate by passing it into the update function. Finally, when the loop is over, we print out and plot the information we collected. That includes the mean estimate of each bandit, the total reward earned, the final win rate, the number of times we explored and exploited, and the number of times we selected the optimal bandit. We'll also plot the cumulative reward. All right, so just to recap, your job is to fill in all the lines of code that say to do, and when you're done, this script should run and it should select the optimal bandit according to the probabilities outlined in the theory lecture. 